The Crew 9 astronauts have just splashed down south of Tallahassee into the water, safely bringing a conclusion to the saga that was the Boeing Starliner first crewed test mission with SUNY Williams and Butch Wilmore. Now, if you remember, they have been up on the International Space Station for almost nine months. They launched last June, and now, finally, they are back on Earth. Well, right now they're in the ocean. I'm literally recording this seconds after they splashed down. While much has been said about their extended stay on the ISS and their return, not a lot of focus has been on their ride to the International Space Station, the Boeing CST-100 Starliner, which has been experiencing quite a number of difficulties in its now 10, 11 year lifespan of development. What is next for Starliner? Are they gonna put another crew on Starliner and launch it anytime soon? I'm gonna get into that. But first, I wanna talk about some recent news that was Boeing saying, or at least one member of Boeing, saying that they are not actually going to sell off their space assets. If you remember last October, there was some talk because there was new leadership at Boeing, new CEO, and they were losing a lot of money on Starliner. The Q4 2024 report that was released in January, the filing, stated that they took half a billion charge on the Boeing Starliner program itself, just that program, and therefore they've lost a total of more than $2 billion on Starliner. So that's not the total cost of development. That's how much they've lost in addition to the money that NASA gave them in the first place to build it. It is a fixed price cost contract, which Boeing is not used to. Most of these prime contractors, these large companies are used to having development programs go and they get additional money when it costs more. But in this case, since it was fixed price, Boeing's lost over $2 billion so far on Starliners. The thought was that maybe with new leadership, Boeing was just going to cut its losses with Starliner. Yes, it has some awards with Starliner and NASA, um, you know, some contracts that NASA gave them already. However, that would not necessarily stop Boeing from saying we're losing a ton of money on this. We're done. However, Space News is reporting, and I'm linking articles down in the description, that last week during the SAT show, the satellite conference, Michelle Parker, the Boeing Space Mission Systems Vice President, she stated, I know there's been some discussion about that, but it is core to the business that I run, the satellite and associated groundwork. We are investing heavily in this area. We're looking forward to delivering capabilities to the customer this year, next year, and well beyond that. So according to her, they are not getting rid of Starliner. They're not getting rid of their space business at all. They, Boeing, in addition to doing Starliner, they run the International Space Station essentially for the United States side and for you know, most of the collective. They have additional space projects, for example, X-37B. They have a subsidiary, the Millennium Space. Like they, they are involved in space quite a bit. So it sounds to me like those rumors from last fall are not coming to play. However, I would say that this particular person in charge of the space branch of Boeing had Maybe has an incentive to say that Boeing is going to keep its space branch because that's her job. Um, but we'll just have to see how that pans out. It might actually mean that Starliner has a future and how it might compete against SpaceX's Dragon. Don't really know exactly, but I want to talk about that because NASA, since 2014, has recognized that there should be at least two providers, dissimilar redundancy. Yes, there's Soyuz. We don't want to rely on Soyuz, right? We don't necessarily want to rely on the Russians at this time of geopolitical tension. Um, we don't have an alternative at this point. We, we don't have the Chinese, for example, who's going to go to the ISS with their crude uh, vehicle. That, that's just not going to happen. I don't even know if the docking mechanisms are compatible. Someone who knows, let me know in the comments. Do you know if the Chinese could actually dock to the ISS with the different ports? I don't know. And so what we want is two American vehicles, two commercial American vehicles to provide, and I'm, I'd say more than two, but NASA decided to go with two awards. And at the time, it was actually quite controversial. This is back in 2014, I remember, where there was pressure to just choose one, and that one would be Boeing. But NASA decided to choose two, SpaceX being the other, and thank God for that, because since May of 2020, we have been reliant, we being the United States, have been reliant on SpaceX Dragon to carry astronauts to the ISS and back home. And that is what happened with the Starliner program with the astronauts who had to rely on Dragon to return them home. But before that happened, we had an uncrewed test flight of Boeing Starliner had issues. It had issues. It had so many issues. I'm not going to recap them here. You can read about them. It had so many issues that Boeing and NASA decided to do an uncrew, a second uncrewed test flight, which was not in the plan. The plan was to do one uncrewed test flight and then a crewed test flight and then the regular Starliner 1 mission. 
And instead, the Boeing decided that they were going to fly on their own dime again because it's fixed price an uncrewed mission number two, which also did not go very well, which made me a little bit surprised that they went ahead and did this first crewed flight back in June. So the crew test flight, um, normally it would be four, but because it was a test, it was only two. If you remember demo two with SpaceX back in March, 2020, it was just two astronauts. And now SpaceX regularly flies four people up to the ISS and back down and hypothetically could actually fit more in there. Um, but because this was a test flight for Starliner, they just flew two people up there. And it's a good thing they did <laughs> because as we saw, there was the decision made to not return those astronauts on Starliner. Starliner returned back to Earth uncrewed, no people on board, September of last year. There were actually no problems as far as we know of that. Starliner came back just, just fine. So, you know, in retrospect, they would have survived, but NASA doesn't do things like, oh, they would have split. Let's take the chance. NASA is a little bit more cautious. You know, agree with them or not, they, they were just more cautious. They decided to keep those astronauts up there and not return them on their initial ride. So where does that leave Starliner? Starliner has now demonstrated it can get astronauts to the ISS and it could have gotten those astronauts back down, but it has not done that full cycle of bringing the astronauts up to the ISS and then bringing them back down. So we don't actually know whether or not NASA is going to approve the full Starliner program to move forward or if they're gonna require a second test flight. One thing we know is a quote from two weeks ago, NASA's Steve Stitch during a media briefing, he said, we've got to figure out manifest wise where Starliner fits. Does it fit best towards the end of this calendar year, the first flight back after CFT or early next year? So NASA doesn't even know you know, where on the calendar, where on the manifest, should it go this year? You know, Starliner flew last year. Is it going to go whole skip 2025 and just go in 2026? That's where they were leaning at the end of last year. But it sounds like as of, you know, two weeks ago, they hadn't made a decision yet. And nowhere in that quote, nowhere did Steve Stitch say whether or not there would be people on board and how many people. The plan was to have Starliner 1 mission with four people on board fly after the first crew test mission. And the initial astronauts who were assigned to that mission got reassigned multiple times just simply because it was taking so long. There were two Americans, a Japanese astronaut and a Canadian astronaut who were assigned to that mission. And we don't actually know if that's manifest the way it is right now is going to stay. We, we again, don't even know if Starliner 1 is even going to happen. What we do know is NASA has purchased Starliner 1, 2, and 3. So three full missions of Starliner to take astronauts to the Inter International Space Station and back down. They have the option of adding three more, but we're running into the end of the ISS here. It's 2025. The ISS is scheduled to be deorbited in 2030, so that's five years. The astronaut baby is going to join us for the rest of this video. Elon Musk made statements on Twitter X saying that he thinks that the ISS should be deorbited early. I don't think anyone's really taking that seriously. I did a video on that. If you want to check it out, what that would actually look like to deorbit it early. But let's just say that the ISS has five years left. Given the delays to Starliner, how many missions could Starliner actually fit? How many missions could Boeing actually do of Starliner in the time period, keeping in mind that a typical NASA mission that is not a demo mission is usually about six months. Those are That's how long an expedition is for NASA. Russia actually stays up longer. Their astronauts tend to be up there, you know, more like nine months, sometimes a year. Optimistically, if Boeing Starliner is able to have its first full mission in the beginning of 2026, what kind of cadence will they have? So SpaceX goes up every six months. Um, would Boeing be able to do that? I don't know. But based on history, it does not appear that there is going to be rapid turnaround of Boeing. It's not in Boeing's culture. And Boeing is also relying on United Launch Lines, and it's not in their culture to move fast either. Last year, I was thinking that maybe the ISS would be extended because there was talk about not having a gap between the end of the ISS and the beginning of commercial space stations, CLDs. Because at this point, commercial space stations have been delayed quite a bit. And there's a possibility, a very real possibility, that the ISS could be deorbited before a commercial space station, a long-term commercial space station is operational. I'm not talking about Haven 1, that's a short term, but a longer term space station might not be ready in time.
And so there was talk last year and the year before and for a few years now that maybe we extend ISS like another year or two. And there was pushback for that. And so I, I actually don't think that's going to happen anymore. So I think that the 2030 date is pretty well set unless, again, the Trump administration decides to deorbit it early. But that's less likely because of international partners. What about beyond the ISS? What, what is the mission of Starliner Beyond ISS? I actually talked about this already in a video. You can watch it up here. Um, it doesn't have a strong competitive edge. It is an alternative. It is in addition to SpaceX Dragon. SpaceX Dragon right now is like the gold standard, right? <laughs> it is what NASA entrusted to bring its astronauts home safely. It is what we have been relying on, but that is kind of the point is that we don't want to be reliant on one vehicle. We don't have just one type of airplane or one type of car. We have many different types of vehicles that are made by different manufacturers and different brands and have different purposes or niches and maybe even regional. I, I forgot to mention earlier that the Indians are also developing their own crewed vehicle for their own space station. So like we have options globally, but within the United States, I still think it's important to have multiple options, even though I very much admire what SpaceX can do with Falcon and Dragon. And then, of course, the idea of transitioning away from Dragon and Falcon when Starliner is operational, which will still be a few years yet. So the only reason I think that Starliner could have a future is if there is a partnership with commercial space stations where they want another provider. You know, um, I don't know how else to put that. We have um, Sierra Space Dream Chaser, which continues to be very delayed. I, I keep hoping. I really hope this is the year. I made a prediction in January that this is the year of Dream Chaser. It might not be, but I keep hoping. <laughs> we have the exploration company Nix, which is just ever so fascinating. That's a European company. I, I'm really cheering them on just because I think they're doing things pretty right. Um, you know, initially, it's, that's going to be a cargo vehicle. Same with Dream Chaser. Both are initially cargo vehicles, and then they can become crewed vehicles. We, we don't really have much else out there, but that might be enough. We have Dragon Operational, and we have now, hopefully, Starlander coming online, and the other vehicles are possibilities. They're not in existence yet. So if a commercial space station wants a second provider, they only have one choice right now. They don't have any choice right now, but you know, they only have one choice in the coming years until those other vehicles are able to prove themselves as crewed vehicles as well. But do you think that there is a market for Starliner, and who, or where, or what? What, what might be the niche that Starliner would find that would keep Boeing wanting to keep spending money to recover some of those losses for one thing, but also to see it as a, a profitable future business. Let me know in the comments.